Welcome everyone to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and here we are at day 28. And I have with me a wonderful guest today, Eric Hunt. Eric, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here with me. Thank you. I'm very happy to be with you. Yeah. Um, we, as you know, have been having a daily conversation about peace. And the purpose of this is to generate number one, more conscious awareness of the energy and how we can cultivate it within us, but also to bring inspiration to people and hope and direction. And so we're going to begin our discussion. Eric, I must ask you, what is peace to you? Great. So, <clears throat> Let's look first at what is it that I would be missing if I wasn't peaceful. Mm. I'd like to start there. Okay. It might be easier um, if I do that for me. And I don't know if it might be helpful for other people. Sure. Um, but often we find ourselves at odds with ourselves. So I have a choice if I don't like something. I might um, withdraw, but still find myself at odds within my own self about what it is that I thought I was upset about. And as long as I hold on to this idea that I'm upset about that, it seems like I can't be peaceful all, also at the same time. It's just not possible to do both. And it isn't always easy to let go of that either because um, it seems that when any aspect of something is a bother, that then that whole thing becomes a bother. You know, there's something particular about a person or a place or a situation or a circumstance um, that is upsetting. And then it seems like everything about that is upsetting. It seems like that has to be a whole somehow. And it seems that peace also works in a similar sort of way. It's always whole. As I said, I didn't think I could have peace if I didn't have peace. If I was upset, um, overly concerned about something, finding something just too difficult to deal with it, I don't think I could have peace at the same time. And so I can't have peace about this person or this place or this situation until I become right in my mind about it. It's not really about them. It's about myself. I'm upset. That's what's really going on. And my upset, I'm projecting that and believing that the real power of it is in this other person, this situation, what they said, what they did, or whatever. Or, or what happened in traffic or at work. When work doesn't go right, people are... I, I, was, uh, I did a lot of carpentry work when I was younger. I worked my way through school. And, you know, we made mistakes sometimes. And not usually costly mistakes, but we made mistakes sometimes. <clears throat> and there's nothing you can do about it when you make a mistake. Um, you cut something too short, for example, it just doesn't fit. Or, or, uh, or, or other mistakes may happen. And you just can't really make anything, anything, anything useful out of that again. At least not at that size, anyway. And there's nothing you can do to change that. But it hits you sometimes of, you know, making it more difficult on yourself about what you did because you don't really realize to let go of what it is you did because it's not happening anymore. It's easier enough to let it go, but you don't think that way. You think instead about what it is that happened as if it's sort of still happening. So every upset seems to be like that. It seems like there's an upset that occurs and because it occurs, um, there's a change that occurs in my demeanor or my attitude or my acceptance of what it is I'm doing, where I is I'm at and all that. And it seems like that then becomes a problem as if it, as if that outside thing has a power still. So I think when people argue about that in their heads and when they explore that in their heads and they, and they're, just too upset 
um, they have to realize, like, I, I can't be peaceful if I'm like this. Uh, and also, I'm not going to really come up with a solution for how I'm going to talk to my boss about my mistake or how I'm going to deal with the, you know, the, the crazy traffic today or how I'm going to deal with uh, what I don't like about what somebody said today. I'm not going to really be able to make progress with that because I'm too upset with it my own self. So um, I was a nervous young person. You know, you're a nervous young person. Um, um, I would meet people and I would not really feel comfortable when meeting them and it would be quiet. I wouldn't have anything to say. Not that I didn't have still an awareness about what I could say, but I didn't have the ability to do it because the peacefulness was lost. So it's like that. Now, <clears throat> the reason I said I wanted to start there was because um, what seems to happen when we try to answer a question about something that is greater than all of its parts is that people get kind of lost on the fact of that it's we're really talking about something that's greater than all of its parts. So peace is something that there's a source of and Eric isn't the source of it. Your peace is not has nothing, nothing to do very much with me, really. Um, we can make a case of that what I do isn't peaceful, and so therefore um, it didn't work out for you um, in your situation or something like that. And and that would be a decision that could be made between two people, perhaps, and even peacefully. Um, but we couldn't really do anything about the fact of that we see things differently, hear things differently, and, and process things differently. We really can't do anything about that. So there's this private aspect of ourselves, which we really can't share, um, which may prefer to have a peaceful resolution and a peaceful conversation, a peaceful way of dealing with things, but we can't really communicate that when we're at odds with each other either. So just like I couldn't be at peace when I was upset about something in my own privacy, I can't be at peace. I can't also be at peace with someone else. I've heard you talk about collaborating a few times. And it's my general um, understanding that people don't really know much about what that mean, really means. Um, they think it means asking questions and answering questions. They think it means debate. They think it means a lot of things that it doesn't really mean. Um, collaboration in science, for example, um, many years ago, um, when communication was much more difficult to have, and we didn't have the internet and all that, and we, we didn't have telephone communication like we have had for many decades already now, um, people used to communicate by mail. Right. Scientists would write to each other, and they, and they would take, spend a lot of time working out exactly how to say what they want to say and putting it down on paper and mailing it to their fellow scientists someplace else in another country or, or the other side of that country or whatever. And they would wait for a response. It might take, you know, several days might go by, some weeks don't even go by, maybe longer. And they would get their response and they would be very excited and they'd read their responses and they would take their time in communicating with each other. And so they began to have conferences, they began to get together, they began to meet with each other. They began in that way to realize it takes a great bit of time to work these things out. And they probably also discovered that when we're called out sort of on the spot to say something about what it is we think we know, um, it isn't like sitting down and writing. Now I realize how much effort I put into this when I sat down and write, wrote about this took me hours and hours and now I realize like, well, it takes time to communicate verbally also and to do that with other people also. So it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of acceptance of re-communicating oftentimes before things are really collaboratively, we're helping each other. Yeah. And oftentimes also we in the way of each other because we make assumptions about what it is that we think we know or what it is that we think that the other person doesn't know and all that sort of thing. And it becomes difficult to get in the way of our communicating that way also. So I think communicating also has to be the same thing exactly as peace. 
in order for there to be true collaboration. I think peace is necessary for true collaboration. I don't think people can communicate properly and appreciate each other when there isn't peace inside first. You bring up so many interesting points. I, I really want to touch on a couple of them. Um, first off, I want to thank you for starting with the contrast because I think that's important. You know, sometimes as as we have these, you know, this past month, we've been talking about what peace is. But what I also know happens, and, and I can say from my own experience, that sometimes I can be not at peace with myself and not observe that. It can completely um, fall short of coming into my conscious awareness, and yet it's wreaking all kinds of havoc in my life. And so I really appreciate the examples that you gave about like when you were younger and um, particularly as working as a carpenter and how essential it was, right, that you, um, that you are engaged with what you're doing because if you're making something and it doesn't fit, well, then there's an lesson. issue. <laughs> and I heard my father's voice so clearly say, measure twice, cut once. Mm. And I couldn't help but think about how this so fits in with what you're saying. Because when we are aware of the contrast, right, we can also be aware that if we take measurements of where we are and measure twice, that we can make certain that how we then represent ourselves in this world and that's both on a personal level and in terms of how we are with the world at large. We can determine our readiness. I love also how you brought in that whole collaborative aspect because I, I'm, I'm in agreement that if we are understanding what true peace is, it is number one dependent on our conscious awareness, right? When we're out of it. Mm -hmm. and being aware of what that contrast looks like and feels like. But also this, this um, point that you brought up about you must be at peace within yourself in order to effectively collaborate. And if ever there was a time that we need to start collaborating, it's now. We are all in this together, obviously, and we have got to collaborate, not from a place of of ego, but a place of being totally present within ourselves and sharing an intention. So thank you. And thank you also for bringing my father into the conversation. <laughs> You're welcome. I didn't know about that. <laughs> now, something else you mentioned, you, you, um, you said that you don't, you don't look at the news. I think you said for 20 years, maybe you didn't mm -hmm. look. I remember yeah. that you said that because I look at the news all the time. Yeah, once a day, lots of times a day, I look at the news, and um, I remember I went through a battle with that, especially this year. Things changed rapidly over the course of four years in this country, um, but this year, of course, everything seemed to happen. Oh yeah, we have a climate that's out of control. We have. Um, um, suffering all around the country. We have, well. the <laughs> yeah. we have um, COVID pandemic all over the place. Mm -hmm. And people have all different angles on that. It's not even happening, some people are saying. It's in, and, uh, and other people are saying, you know, we don't have to wear these masks. Look what happened in this country. You know, in Sweden, they don't wear masks. And um, People have opinions about it. And so I had to get accustomed to all this, you know, this is what's going on. This is the turmoil about it all. We can't really get down to talking about how to deal with the climate, even really how to deal with the fire that's going on. I'm sure we could actually be handling the fires better. I'm sure we could actually be handling the pandemic better. I'm sure we could actually be handling the climate, the um, political situations better. But all of it at once 
is stirring in everybody's mind. And we have a lot of young people um, that um, this is their first experience in the, you know, as young adults with what's going on in the world. And what a, what a world for them. Yeah. I could feel sorry for myself thinking about my world, but you know, I look at what, what are they dealing with? Sure. Like for them, how, how are they seeing yeah. themselves being able to be a part of it? And I watch carefully what's happening with people that are on one side, the extreme of the one side and the extreme of the other side and what's going on in the middle. And it's very confusing for the people in the middle because they're really in the midst of this conflict. It must be bad, I suppose, on being on your end. I know it's been like for myself to have, you know, strong opinions and to be um, insistent in my own mind about how things are supposed to be. I remember being stubborn. And I think this optimism that we pretend that we have sometimes becomes very, very stubborn. And we become very caught up in our own estimation of what everything's supposed to be like, how it's all supposed to happen. And we become a little director inside our own mind, at least anyway, if not with other people. And we become very intolerant of different opinions, especially if they're strongly held. So this was something that I, you know, had to deal with this year, especially. Not that I didn't deal with it before, but not at this level. <laughs> and, I, and I wouldn't have thought that there were levels of it. Right. But there are aspects and gradations and, and um, you know, various degrees and intervals of all of it. And it's very difficult to resolve. And um, I realized, you know, this is, this is a, a problem so difficult that it all can't be resolved in any one mind, that it takes a great deal of collaboration, as you say uh, earlier, that this is the best time, you know, that we begin to rein ourselves in to realize that we need to be able to be able to, to collaborate. And peace is definitely the foundation for being able to do that. All of the organizations really um, were built with uh, or designed with time within those organizations and structuring within those organizations so that there could be time to deal with issues at that pace um, that would be comfortable in different times, way different times. It, it, it doesn't, there's no time now for um, partisan politics. There's no time for all the game playing now. There's no time for all of the power playing now. There's no time for all of the disagreement now. And yet there has to be. So what has to change? You know, we have to do the best we can to try and help people to see it isn't going to change if we all don't do our little part. My little part is to integrate the best I can with all that's going on because I can't purify everything that's going on. It's not the way I'm not going to be able to straighten it all out. And so I, I need to be able to help out where I can. I can help out people on a personal level to see, you know, are you thinking this through? Are you, are you, are you making yourself unhappy because of what you're doing here with, with the way that you're thinking and I mean, what you think that has to be demanded has to be changed. Maybe it does have to be changed, but first, don't you have to be comfortable, peaceful, so you can communicate about it? If that's what you're there for, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of people that are there to be able to communicate about it in certain positions and so on and so forth, where, where they're needed that way, and they're not able to do that. Well, I think the most important thing is actually something that you had said earlier, and that is, oh, just heard my father's voice again. You know, measuring twice, cutting once, um, recognizing that we are responsible for the energy that we are projecting out into the world. We live in a quantum universe, right? And, and there is action and reaction. And so I think it is important for every single one of us to understand how integral we are and that we are constantly engaging energetically. 
and that we um, need to be cognizant of that and also cultivate this conscious awareness of whatever energy is predominantly being projected because it does have an influence. So um, what came to my mind is also this friend, this dear friend of mine from so many years ago. And we used to get together at a friend's house and we used to call it kitchen table spirituality. And we would, we would just talk. And my friend at the time was in her seventies and she used to, we honestly were having the same conversations, you know, about, well, who watches the news, who doesn't, who reads the paper, who doesn't. And she used to talk all the time, Eric, about reading the newspaper as practice. And she said she would engage with the newspaper with the intention to be able to practice projecting love regardless of what she was reading, regardless of, of what you know, global crisis we were in. And she did it so that she could exercise being, um, being present and not judging, not separating herself and moving towards this collective consciousness with the understanding that she had an influence on energetically on, on what was happening. And so that's always been sort of my um, I've adopted that. And I would say I've adapted to that as well. And so um, I think that the most important thing is for each and every one of us to understand really how important we are to the whole scheme of things. And like you said earlier, true collaboration cannot happen without the intention to show up in an in, in energy of peace because it very quickly will turn into competition. And there can't be those forces vying for um, control or power. We truly need to collaborate, each person coming to the table with something that is going to enhance lives, enhance the world, enhance our everyday experience. And so I love everything that you've said. I think that you've brought a great um, wisdom to the table and I really appreciate that. So um, back to peace um, and truth. Okay. We, we wanna know the truth. I really think we need to know the truth about ourselves. And the truth about myself, I'm not always peaceful. Um, so that means that I don't have any truth then when I'm not peaceful. And this is what I was referring to also before. If I, if I can't be peaceful and I'm at odds with myself, upset with something, um, then it's me that I'm upset with and I need to be peaceful within my own self. Yep. So there's two areas of peace. One, one area of peace is what happens in my communicating with others but this other level of peace happens with, with my communicating within, with what, I, with, with what I really am. And what I really am is not what I'm seen as, or heard as, or felt as, or known as in the world. It isn't the same thing. And I really need to be comfortable with that, that isn't the same thing. I'm not concerned about how I'm perceived. I'm concerned about am I perceiving myself truly? Because now I can see more truly what we do keep private from each other without it interfering. Because otherwise it does seem to interfere. I look at, I look at someone and I'm judging myself and I'm comfortable with myself, not realizing about it. And so therefore I'm doing that also mm -hmm. to other people. Yeah. <clears throat> brought up some great points. You've given us lots of food for thought. Okay. And um, 
we need to draw our conversation to a close, but I would um, like to ask, first off, if there are any parting words that you'd like to leave our audience with. And then, of course, tell people how they can find you. Well, I, I hope that people are able to um, continue along the lines here with what you've been um, establishing. It's, you know, it's a tremendous idea. This is your 28th day of talking about peace. You've invited various different people. You've tried to look at it from all different sides and angles. And you've tried to explore the depths of it. And I'm pr pretty sure you find that there's more and more really depth to it than we might give it credit to when we give it an hour or two here and there. Sure. In most people's lives, it probably doesn't even get that much sometimes <laughs> in their whole lifetime, maybe. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, classifying um, other people and other situations and other circumstances and other difficulties is not the place to start. Yeah. I don't know what happens when people hear someone say, look within, uh, but I mean, become not to be able to completely be yourself. And as you see yourself in comfort with yourself, that's the place that you could start in participating with the people. It's pretty easy to find me on Facebook. I, I, I do look a little darker than that, but um, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. My face isn't it's not that hard to figure out. And if you look at Eric Hunt on Facebook, um, you'll pick out my picture. It looks pretty much like this. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my, my real pleasure. And um, OK, <coughs> so people can just find you through Eric Hunt on, on Facebook. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, all right. And you think? Um, I'm sorry? Pretty easy, don't you think? Yeah, I think so, too. Well, thank you so very much. And um, I think, as I said before, you've given us lots of food for thought. And of course, that's always the benefit, right, of coming into conversations that leave us wanting more. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Um, and today, of course, I'm going to recite my peace pledge as I have for the past 28 days. For any of you who haven't received your copy yet or received seven ways to cultivate peace within you, I just want you to remember that it doesn't matter where you are in order to start this journey within yourself. It just takes a choice to do so. And so that was my intention with creating those um, ways to cultivate the energy and also to giving you a copy of the peace pledge words are very powerful they have an energy to them and we absorb them as we become more and more in alignment with them so um, please go to heartshiftcoach.com and get your copies if you haven't already but here's my peace pledge for you my pledge is to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart. Like Eric said, it can't happen without me being in alignment with that. With my clear intentions and taking personal responsibility, staying in that journey within myself, observing myself, um, taking responsibility for my beliefs and what they create, my thoughts, the choices that I am making, the actions that I'm taking, and even at the bottom line, the experience that all of that has created outside of me. I take responsibility in acknowledging that if that is not for my highest good, the highest good of all, that I can shift that within me. And of course, it allows me to take more compassionate action. And so I take this peace pledge and I pass it from my peaceful heart to yours, to yours, Eric. And thank you so much for bringing yours today and to all of our audience. And um, just remember, peace begins within and it truly is the key for us to be able to 
collaborate, to be able to um, be in partnerships and to truly accept ourselves as the incredible beings of light that we are. So peace in, peace out peace. until tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye. And bye, Eric. Thank you.